The House will be in order. The prayer will be offered by our chaplain, Father Conroy. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, on a day when violence has come to this assembly, we ask your blessing on our brother, Representative Steve Scalise, the two officers and the staffer who have been shot. Bless the hands of those who tend to their injuries. We as Americans are blessed by a free and open society with rights secured by law and the Constitution. But once again, we are reminded that there is a vulnerability that comes with that openness. May we all be vigilant in being good citizens, neighbors, and defenders of our way of life at a time when so many challenges to our way of life and government seem under siege. We thank you for the men and women who respond to the crises that befall us, especially the Capitol Police and all first responders. May their heroism and generosity of spirit be an inspiration to us all, and may they be assured of our appreciation of their service. And in this great silence, as we are gathered most dramatically as this assembly, the People's House, may Republicans and Democrats be mindful of the rare companionship they share. Men and women who have taken very public responsibility for our country that carries so many burdens. And today the reminder, shared danger. May this day be characterized by kindness goodwill and compassion one to another. God bless America, and may all that is done this day be for your greater honor and glory. Amen. Amen. The chairs examine the journal of the last day's proceedings and announces to the House's approval thereof. Pursuant to Clause 1 of Rule 1, the journal stands approved. The chair will lead the House in the Pledge of Allegiance and invites the members of the gallery to join. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For what purpose does the gentleman from Wisconsin seek recognition? I ask to revise and extend my remarks and address the House for one minute. The gentleman is recognized. My colleagues, there are very strong emotions throughout this House today. We are all horrified by this dreadful attack on our friends and on our colleagues and those who serve and protect this capital. We are all praying for those who are attacked and for their families. Steve Scalise, Zachary Barth, Matt Micah, Special Agent David Bailey, Special Agent Crystal Greiner. We are all giving our thoughts to those currently being treated for their injuries at this moment. And we are united. We are united in our shock we are united in our anguish. An attack on one of us is an attack on all of us.
I know we want to give our thanks to the first responders and to the Alexandria Police Department who are on the scene in minutes. And I know this House wants to state unequivocally that we are, as ever, awed by the tremendous bravery of the Capitol Police. <laughs> I spoke with Special Agent Bailey and Special Agent Griner this morning. One was being treated and one was about to go into surgery. I expressed our profound gratitude to them. It is clear to me, based on various eyewitness accounts, that without these two heroes, Agent Bailey and Agent Griner, many lives would have been lost. I know that we all want to learn as much as we can about what happened. We just all received a briefing from the Sergeant of Arms. I have complete confidence in the investigation that's being conducted by the Capitol Police, the FBI, who are also working with local law enforcement. I know we want to extend our gratitude for the outpouring of support that we've received from throughout the Capitol and from throughout the country. And now, knowing Steve Scalise, as we all do, he is likely really frustrated that he's not going to be able to play in the baseball game. <laughs> I also know that Steve wants all of us to commend the bravery of those who came to the aid of the wounded. In the coming days, we will hear their stories, and we will have the chance to hold up their heroism. My colleagues, there are so many memories from this day that we will want to forget, and there are so many images that we will not want to see again. But there is one image in particular that this House should keep, and that is a photo I saw this morning of our Democratic colleagues gathered in prayer this morning after hearing the news. You know, every day we come here to test and to challenge each other. We feel so deeply about the things that we fight for and the things that we believe in. At times, our emotions can clearly get the best of us. We're all imperfect. But we do not shed our humanity when we enter this chamber. For all the noise and all the fury, we are one family. These were our brothers and sisters in the line of fire. These were our brothers and sisters who ran into danger and sa saved countless lives. So before this house returns to its business, let's just slow down and reflect to think about how we're all being tested right now, because we are being tested right now. I ask each of you to join me to resolve, to come together, to lift each other up, and to show the country, to show the world that we are one house, the people's house, united in our humanity. It is that humanity which will win the day, and it always will. God bless, I yield. Mrs. Gentilady from California seek recognition. Mr. Speaker, I, I rise to join the distinguished speaker in paying tribute to the brave men and women of the Capitol Police Force and also in sadness for the assault that was made on our colleagues and members of the staff. To my colleagues, you're going to hear me say something you've never heard me say before. I identify myself with the remarks of the speaker. <laughs> They are beautiful remarks, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much for the sentiments that they represent. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Again, we are not one caucus or the other in this house today, but I, we speak for each other in saying uh, that uh, we send our thoughts and prayers to our colleague, Steve Scalise. Personally, we have our Italian-American connection, so as soon as I heard his name, I wa was filled with concern, as I would be for anyone here, but we have that special connection, so our hopes and prayers, and I, I said to the speaker, I'll be asking you every five minutes how is Steve coming along? And also to Z for Zach Barth in Congressman Roger Williams' office, Matt Mika, who was, Micah, who was a former staffer, and of course, as the speaker acknowledged, Crystal Greiner and David Bailey. In acknowledging their sacrifice and the for how fortunate we all were that they were on the scene because other lives would have probably been lost, I want us to remember that every single day the Capitol Police protects all of us, takes risk for us. And while a day like this is a time when we can focus on it so sadly, it doesn't mean that other days aren't as, aren't as challenging. And I especially want to call attention uh, to Detective John Gibson and Officer Jacob Chestnut, who almost uh, 19 years ago, 1988 it was, in July, lost their lives protecting the Congress, the Capitol, and not just the members of Congress, the staff, the press, and our visitors, people who come to see this Capitol, this great edifice to democracy known throughout the world. So they are protecting a great deal, and it is an attraction, and that makes it all the more risky. You may not know this, my colleagues, but every time I pray, which is very frequently, and certainly every Sunday, I pray for all of you, all of you together. In the earlier years, I used to pray for your happiness, uh, for the fact that we would, working together, heed the words of President Kennedy in the closing of his, his inaugural address when he, when he said, may God's, God's work must truly be our own. How do we view what God's will is for us? How do we come together to give confidence to the American people that as our founders intended, we would have our disagreements and we would debate them and we would have confidence in our beliefs and humility to listen to others. But in more recent years, I have been praying not only for that, but for our safety. As I above anyone in here, and I can say that quite clearly, have been probably the target of more, well, I'm the political target, and therefore the target of more threats than anyone, perhaps other than the President of the United States, Barack Obama. And so I prayed for Barack Obama, and now I continue to pray for him, and I pray for Donald Trump, uh, that his presidency will be successful, and that his family will be safe. Because it is about family. We are called for a purpose to this body. It's a great thing. And we know what it means to each of us to serve, and we recognize that in others. And we also recognize that you have your constituents, we have ours, and we respect you and your constituents who sent you here, all worthy of respect. But we do have our differences. And so I pray my prayer is that we can resolve our differences in a way uh, that furthers the preamble to the Constitution, takes us closer uh, to e, plurib e pluribus unum. And today, again, it was, it's, a, it, it's a, again, it's in the family. It's an injury in the family uh, for the staff and for our colleague and for his leadership. As I mentioned just a minute ago in the fuller thing, Sports are a wonderful thing in our country. Probably one of the most unified, I think the arts, we like the same music or plays or whatever, but sports really bring us together in our cities. And you see people who have the biggest differences of opinion in politi on politics, and yet when their team is on the field, people come together. 
people come together. So when this team was on the field practicing uh, in such a, with such camaraderie and such brotherhood, I don't know if you have any sisters on your team, we have two on our team, for, for, the, for this person to take this action was so cowardly, so cowardly. We'll learn more about motivation and the rest of that. But it seems particularly sad, although any violent death, of course, is sad, but particularly sad that at a time when we, people want us to come together and we're prepared to come together tomorrow night that this assault would be made. But we cannot let that be a victory for the assailant or anyone who would think that way. So tomorrow we'll go out on the field, we'll root for our team, we we'll want everyone to do his or her very best, and we will use this occasion as one that brings us together and not separates us further. And with that, again, I want to thank the speaker for bringing us together, and again, with endless gratitude to our Capitol Police, in particular today, of course, Crystal Griner, David Bailey, but never out of our prayers, Detective John Gibson and Officer Jacob Chestnut. Thank you, my colleagues, for the opportunity to share some thoughts with you on this sad day. Steve and others, you are deeply in our prayers. We count the minutes until you return. Please convey that to him, Mr. Speaker. Thank you all. Chair lays before the House a communication. The Honorable the Speaker, House of Representatives, sir, pursuant to the permission granted in Clause 2H of Rule 2 of the Rules of the U.S. House of Representatives, the Clerk received the following message from the Secretary of the Senate on June 14, 2017, at 9.24 a.m. That the Senate passed, Senate 831. Signed sincerely, Karen L. Haas. What does the gentleman from North Carolina seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I move the House to now adjourn. The question is on the motion to adjourn. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted.